Welcome, Dad. I'll get to the Taco Casa hotline. I'll let you bring Coach McCorvey uh, into the show. Well, we're happy to bring Woody in. He's been a friend for a long time. Uh, he was in Alabama when I was. Of course, everybody was in Alabama when I was there because I was there 100 years. But uh, he's uh, going into the Alabama Sports Hall of Fame, which he certainly deserves. And with Dabo for a good while, and we appreciate him taking time to be on. And I know he's busy trying to figure out what's going on. Good morning, Woody. How you doing? Good morning. How are you all doing this morning? We're good, doing coach. great. I appreciate you taking time to be on. Um, I guess Barry Barry's got a question for you. I've got. I got. I'll ask mine first. I <laughs> I was a little bit surprised that Georgia is going to play Clemson in the opening game of a season. Of course, I'm one of these kind of guys that wants to win the first game, <laughs> and you may win the first game. But to me, was that was that a was that an easy decision? Was that a hard decision? Uh, what what came about about that? Well, it's something that uh, that had been discussed, and you know, now with the uh, CFP strength of schedule and all of that, yeah. and uh, you know, you can drive from here. That's, it's seventy five miles from here to Athens. And when I was here before on Danny Forest staff, we played Georgia every year, and not necessarily the first ball game of the season, but it was always. You know, in the first three, yeah, and uh, it was something that our fans always look forward to. Georgia fans always look forward to with the rivalry and all. And uh, the two ads got together and they discussed it, and uh, it was something that Dabo felt like. You know, we said we should play Georgia every year, and uh, Kirby felt the same way too. And luckily, you know, they were able to work it out to play up in Charlotte next year to open the ball game, and I think it will be exciting for college football. Yeah, I agree. I think it'll be, you know, it'll be, you know, because always, you know, the ACC has has been Clemson and nobody else much since Florida State has not been as good. You hear that all the time if you're, you know, if you're trying to figure out Clemson. Uh, that's just the way it's been a little bit because Clemson's been, you've been so far ahead of everybody. So uh, it was kind of interesting to me to see that jump made that quickly. I thought maybe, it, you know, Alabama plays Georgia this year, third game of the season, which gives them a chance to, both teams a chance to sort of find out where, where they are. But, um, you know, that's interesting stuff to me to see. This. And, and I think maybe, you know, a couple of teams in your league are, are getting better. They're just not there yet. Well, you know, Florida State uh, got a new coach, and hopefully they're going to get back on track. Yeah, uh, Mac Brown is at North Carolina now. He'll do a good job up there. Uh, did yeah. a really good job last year, first year in there. Uh, getting it going back again, and uh, we need Virginia Tech to get going on the full intake. And, uh, you know, we can get all those teams going again and really make this thing competitive. Uh, not only is it going to help ACC, but it's going to help college football. Yeah, sure, Barry. Uh, Coach, you guys at Clemson, I think it was a family program. Uh, you guys are a close group. Uh, you guys have known each other for a while uh, and used to being around each other every single day. I'm sure y'all's players uh, are always by the office uh, checking on you guys. How are you guys handling this difficult time uh, being away from each other because you guys are all so close? Yeah, it's really been tough. Uh, last week, we won't, fortunately, we won't spring break. So everybody was going to get out of here uh, and go to different places and all. But uh, coming back Sunday, we decided that we were going to have a uh, staff meeting. It was all done on computer, what we use in Microsoft Teams uh, to put the whole staff back together because our guys would have been back in class here on Monday. So now, you know, with the, all this virtual stuff that everybody's use, using, and uh, we want to make sure that all these guys are on the same page. And one of the biggest things there is uh, – you know, we sitting over here on the Eastern Time Zone, and we got some kids that are back home out in California. And uh, so, classes, if, if class starts at them at uh, 8 o'clock, I mean, you're talking about 5 o'clock. Oh, right so, I didn't think about that. You know, yeah. I mean, that's something that we really had to be on top of because uh, we don't want to get behind. And, you know, it used to be what most of our kids uh, came from the Southeast. I mean, we spread it out a little bit more now uh, geographically. Uh, with our recruiting base, and so we got kids in all parts of the country, and uh, so we wanted to make sure that we were on the same page, and so we got all that set, and we had another staff meeting yesterday morning, you know, all on the computer, but uh, just Dabo wanted to test base with all the coaches, and he went over every player, 
and wanted to know where they were, what they were doing. Uh, we had our academic people on there with us also uh, because we got three weeks of school left. And the biggest thing for us right now, I mean, we were fortunate to get nine days of practice in uh, this spring. So the main thing for us right now, we need to make sure from an academic standpoint they're all in good shape when we get started back whenever, whenever that's going to happen. Are you guys allowed uh, to have staff meetings, uh, I guess, with your staff uh, and then position meetings with the players? Is the ACC allowing that stuff right now? Well, right now I'm not. Hopefully we'll get some clarification on that. But uh, some conferences are doing that. Yeah. Um, but, but right now we're not able to do that. Now, we can push information to them, uh, you know, by the computer and all. And But a coach cannot meet with them at this point. So hopefully Monday we'll get some uh, freeway on that to be able to do that, to uh, have a little bit more engagement with our players. Uh, also, uh, we'll talk with Coach Woody McCorvey. Trevor Lawrence, I think he had a situation there where he was trying to uh, raise some money. Uh, I guess the NCAA, maybe they stopped it, and they came back and said it was okay. Just talk about what Trevor Lawrence uh, was trying to do there uh, for people. Well, it was his girlfriend. I mean, she came up with the idea, and she wanted to uh, be able to do that, you know. And, uh, and, and, and Trevor joined in with it. But uh, when it got started, our compliance office shut it down and uh, because of the NCAA rule. And because of the times, at least, uh, you know, we were able to uh, – to, to do it. Well, matter of fact, the NCAA basically called us because uh, they were getting so many hits about it, and people just felt like the compassion was not there from that point. And uh, so, you know, we were able to file, file, uh, and get uh, and get it changed. Uh, and Trevor was really happy about that. And uh, I think I saw somebody. I'm not one of these, you know, social media guys, but. Somebody showed something to me where he put out a uh, message on his Instagram account uh, thanking the NCAA for allowing him, uh, he and his girlfriend, to be able to do that. You know, it got started really good. I think they had over $2,500 already in it. And I understand now that uh, it's really gotten a big boost because of that. And, yeah. uh, but that's the way Trevor is. I mean, Trevor's a good guy, and he's very compassionate, and he wanted to be able to, uh, to be able to help people out at this time. Yep, that. Staff-wise, you've been able to keep your guys pretty much uh, together. I know I know Dabo's done a good job of giving them some leadway as far as, you know, seeing families and so forth and paying them well. And uh, to me, that you know, you see people jumping around. I, I, uh, uh, I've been concerned about the transfer portal that we have with players. Um, I, I don't think they care for it. Um, I've always been – I probably like you, I always felt like if a guy transferred, he had to sit out a year, and that stopped a little bit of it. Uh, your thoughts on that? Yeah, one of them, I mean, Dabo really has been able to do a good job of keeping these guys here. Um, yeah. And uh, there's a very loyal group uh, that he's put together. You know, a lot of them, he's had past associations with them, uh, either as a uh, player with them there at Alabama or a coach with them there at Alabama. And all, and the only guy that's left, uh, Jeff Scott, got the South Florida job this year. Yeah. And uh, really, really, truthfully, that's the only reason that a guy should leave you, is to be able to go and be a head coach and run his own program. And I uh, was very fortunate that Jeff was able to get that job. Uh, only tough thing about it, he had one day of spring practice when all this stuff took place. Sure. And so they had to shut down, and so he's kind of in a bind right now. Uh, going to the transfer portal, you know, I think it's – I, I don't like it. I mean, just like you probably wouldn't. I mean, if you were still in yeah, coaching and all. And uh, you get a guy, he comes in, and, um, you know, now everybody's looking for something to happen so quick, but it takes yeah. time. You know, I look at a guy like Tyler Muse uh, that was in our program for five years. He ended up being a captain for us this year on this football team, but he stayed here five years, went up to the combine, ran in the uh, four fours in the 40s, we put in a lot of time, and it's really paid off for him. Uh, Chad Smith, one of our linebackers, uh, that played very good for us this year. I mean, he was a fifth-year guy. But they stayed here. They was able to mature. Did a very good job for us. And in the long run, it's going to be able to help them out 
Uh, one of the things, you know, now in the job that I'm doing, I have to meet with AD uh, once a week, and then uh, once a month we have what we call a coaches council. And, uh, you know, being able to sit in there and listen to some of the other coaches in the other sports, uh, they were talking about the portal. You think about this one, you know, you, you know more a lot about, about this than I do. But uh, seeing basketball, if you got a kid, he ain't played much uh, before uh, January the semester. And next thing you know, he wants to leave and transfer and go somewhere else. I mean, it's, it's just a big distraction. Sure it is. And, uh, you know, a big distraction. And uh, you don't have tampering. I mean, we got tampering now. But then all of a sudden, you know, you got this thing that's wide open. The tampering don't continue. And it's not necessarily going to become a, uh, with the coaches. But you got parents involved. You got you know other outside people involved. Uh, other coaches that might would have worked with those guys as they came along through the system and all, and telling the guy you're not playing as much. You need to leave, and it's just creating a lot of controversy. Uh, yeah, we're talking. Really about, I don't know the answer, Barry. Talking to Coach Woody McCorvey, Coach, uh, going back to the game with LSU. Uh, I know you guys have watched them on film. Um, but sometimes film uh, doesn't tell the whole story. I just want to get your impressions of when you guys actually played them. You saw uh, what you saw with that 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 Bengal Tiger team. It was quite a quite a team they had this year. You know, we watched them had an extra week uh, this time uh, before the championship game uh, to get ready for them, and a uh, very good football team. I mean, the football team that we faced reflected. Uh, what they had done the entire season, and uh, they did a very good job. Um, you know, we got started out, we played well, and anytime you get a team down 17-7, uh, had them in unfamiliar territory because they hadn't been there all season. Uh, but the biggest thing, you know, I'm big on third down, uh, and you can't give up penalties on third down. Anytime you have a penalty on third down on offense, that stops drive and stall drives. If you got a third down penalty on defense, that extends the drives. And the other thing is uh, big plays. In the running game, 12 yards or more. Passing game, 16 yards or more. And after we got up on them, 17 to 7, that's what happened to us. We had too many penalties on third down, gave up too many big plays. Uh, in terms of uh, runs and passes. And uh, and when they got out, we did a good job going into halftime, uh, adjusting, coming back out, scoring, and then going for the two-point conversion, getting it. Uh, but we didn't capitalize on it after that. So uh, that was the biggest thing. But you can't do that against a very good football team in a game of that magnitude. Yeah. Yeah. Are we are we at all in danger? You probably don't know the answer to this, but I don't either. In the danger of bypassing our non conference games in football and just going to the to the league games and playing less games, are, are we in danger of that? You think? Or yeah, I, I I thought maybe it might be cleared up by the last of June, but I, I'm not sure. Well, I think we're on the verge of that. Uh, you know, every year always uh, people complain about our schedule from the media. Uh, yeah. For us here at Clemson, but we got we play who we have to play and who's on sure. the schedule. And uh, but the biggest thing, you know, now with so much emphasis being put on that the strength of schedule and all, I think a lot of schools and a lot of conferences are looking at that. And uh, then you got a lot of cities like Atlanta, Orlando, Charlotte. Places like that are looking to uh, to get multi multi games of that nature, and they putting out good money to be able to uh, get those to conferences, and uh, it's just going to help because you know football does well, and your basketball program does well, baseball program does well. It really helps all of those other Olympic sports, and so any kind of way that we can generate money now. Uh, I think, you know, athletic directors and, and everybody, that's what they're looking at. And I think some of those guys, you know, one thing that we've done here, even back when I was in the 80s, uh, Clemson had been in the Southern Conference before, you know, they got an ACC and all. So they always wanted to be able to help out some of those schools. And every year they would always put one of those schools on the schedule. You know, we played Western Carolina. We might have played Waffle. We might play Furman. But uh, the way it's going now, I think a lot of those games going to go away, and it's going to hurt those programs too. 
Uh, we'll well, talk- uh, back when you were with Danny, well, Danny's got a better job than he had when he being the head coach when you were with him because he, I got a bad foot and he got me some marijuana. So, <laughs> every time we had him on the show, he's out in the middle of the cattle. He's out in the middle of the field uh, talking on his cell phone. And he, half the time, he doesn't know how to use it. It's a flip phone. He, he still has a flip phone. I didn't even know they still made no, that. No, no. Fair, he upgraded. Oh, did he? Upgraded. Oh, yeah, he upgraded. <laughs> oh, Coach, if they – I saw Baylor was doing something interesting. They put a player in charge of each position group. So they had one receiver over the receiver group, get encourage them to work out, doing things like that. Uh, when the, it, when this thing does clear and they say, all right, you can go back to campus, how long do you need for these guys to, to get back in the weight room, get working out, even before you can, even can start practicing them and, and making sure it's a safe situation for them? I mean, how long was, was a, does a college football player need to start to get back in shape and get ready to even start to have a practice? Oh, Bear, I'm just going, you know, off my intuition from all the years I was in it. I mean, if it, you know, if it goes – way people said it's going to go, I think you need a, at least a good month before you put these kids yeah. uh, back in competition. I really do. And uh, because now this game is a lot different than, than when I was playing at Alabama State. I mean, they're bigger, they're faster, they're stronger and all. And uh, and I really think the strength coaches and everybody at least need that much time. Uh, now, some coaches might disagree with me, but uh, when it comes to the X's and O's, I mean, you you, you're going to do what you got, what your players can do. I mean, I think that's what coaching is. But from a physical standpoint, yeah. I think these kids need that much time. And if, if not, you're going to put them in danger. No doubt. That. I don't have anything else. I, I really appreciate you being on with it. I know you're busy, and but uh, we wanted to, first of all, congratulate you on your honor, and we'll look forward to seeing you. And hope you have a, hope you have a, a good summer and things work out for everybody in football. Appreciate it. Thanks, Coach. Okay, really, really thank you guys for having me on.